All right, guys, we have Equinox's Summer 2024 Trash Anime Award Show. I want to do something like this too, where basically instead of like Crunchyroll award show, I have like a award show. It's like community driven where we vote in like what is the most mid anime of this season, worst CGI use, most mid girl, something funny where it's not just glazing but hating. But hey, let's see what he, let's see what he has for us. Hello and welcome to the Summer 2024 Trash Anime Awards. Hello. As the Summer 2024 season comes to a close, it's important to remember not the masterpieces, but the flawed failures, the <laughs> Yagumi legacies of the season. And to do that, we have our guest judges, Lunar Equinox with a wig on, Hatsune Friku, and... <laughs> wait, 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 Hatsune Friku? Hold the fuck up. And Gojo off wish. Hey, so Gojo. without further ado, let's begin. Let's Isekai go. can be summed up in one word. Floxing Nasin Hilly Pillification. What? So what was the worst Isekai of the season? Worst Isekai of the season of, uh, of the ones that I've seen. Probably is just failure frame, right? Isekai Shikaku is probably the best one. Start Dash Monogatari was the lowest rated of the season, which is- Wow, I didn't see this anime, but 4.74? Holy shit, it must have been bad. Rated of the season, which is completely unfair. Every episode was so good, it felt like it was three minutes long. The Suicide Squad anime was one of the- Oh yeah, this is an isekai too. This is just mid. I don't think this is terrible. It's just mid. Most anticipated shows, which immersed me so much, I felt like I was on the Suicide Squad. Quality Assurance in Another World is about a group of beta, beta testers, testers who get hey, stuck inside of the game. But instead of getting mad yeah, bitches, the protagonist decides to keep doing his job. We all had that one coworker. Guys, we can't sneak food home because that's essentially stealing from the- I hate these people, bro. Oh, it's like- how do you exist where your entire being is like my life for the company, my life for these like corporations, my life for these, you know, bosses that does not give a fuck about the working class? Like how? How are you like this? Because in their minds, if they think that they continue to just be a fucking hall monitor and just be a snitch, that they'll get a piece of the pie too, that they'll ascend the ladder. But no, nah, they just continue to be abused. Fucking stupid. The company. Down, boy. Down. However, the award for worst isekai of the season goes to... Yeah. Failure frame. Yeah! <laughs> what I say, boys? I became the strongest and annihilated everything with low-level spells. <laughs> this story had to be written by an edgy 12-year-old who got bullied in school by the yeah. janitor. A Pretty loser much. protagonist... By the janitor? Bro, if you're getting bullied by the janitor, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Written by an edgy 12-year-old who got bullied in school by the janitor. A loser protagonist who is constantly beat by his father while his mother watches K-dramas was teleported to another world with his classmates. He then fails- I'm not gonna lie though, episode 1, I love the setup. I still love episode 1 because that kind of setup I just enjoy like Kumo Deska, but everything beyond that is like, ooh, failed frames truly. The aptitude test gets thrown into a dungeon of monsters to die- Look at that, look at that, it's PS1 animation bro! As soon as they went to the fucking dungeon, they're like, alright, it's CGI time. Die, but after a few minutes of grinding, he reaches level 6 gazillion and is just so cool. He just felt like a school shooter whose manifesto is Ari Ferretta. He'll say stuff school like- I tried to be kind. I tried to be normal, deceiving everyone. I think that was one of the better parts of Failure Frame, though. Truly, his personality, right? There's a lot of moments where he's, like, acting like a pussy, but psych, I'm actually gonna be a fucking sociopathic scammer instead. And I did love how he was just so honest about his evil deeds, because at the end of the day, he was correcting other just evil shitty people with his own evil actions and not being you know, sugarcoating around it. I, I still think that's one of the best parts of this show, along with, like, the slice-of-life moments with Seras, but the action, the combats, oh my god, all failed frames. And because he's so edgy, they needed to make the antagonist significantly more vile. What would a bad person do? Oh Every bad person in this show is just a rapey, creepy dude. And I don't care if there is a good reason for it, because that is the, just the worst laziest form of writing you as an author can only get the audience to feel these emotions if you make them a rapist like 
what does that say about you as a person? I think that you are such a fucking mid writer and you have no idea how to write compelling villains and all you do is rely on the creepy bad guy. Oh, I know, assault! That guy wants to assault women! All authors leave a piece of themselves inside of their- I hope the author of Mushoku Tensei didn't live there, leave their peace inside Rudy. Their stories, including their hidden fetishes. So, which one did the worst- Hey, Yoshino! Hey, dude, alive! What's going on, Yoshino? job at hiding it. A nobody's way up to an exploration hero follows Kaito, who summons mm. mythical beings who all- Solo leveling? But your soldiers are lollies. All look strangely similar to people I would see in Twitch whispers. And don't make them eat rocks like- yeah, okay. The eating animation was so sus. They'd always have their tongue out and like close their eyes and I'm like, what the hell? Like that, man. This is the reason I can't tell people I watch anime. Twilight Out of Focus is the uh, did not check out this one. Yowie. Most obvious of these instances. Gai you can't fool me. I'm not stupid. This is clearly for people that like Gai feet. Put those grippers away. However, the award for most clearly hidden author fetish goes to Hidden Feet of the Season. Hidden? Uh. Was there a weird kink going on of the animes that we've seen? <sighs> I, I do not. BBW. Oh, true. Could be just BBW Elf. True, actually. That whole series is just the author's fetish. Two, my wife has no emotion. <laughs> the robot waifu. The robot waifu one. Man, another long day at work. I wish when I came home I had someone. Anyone. Wait, how could I forget? You've always been there for the me. The Roomba? I never noticed how the light reflects off your oh wheels. Oh my god, Roomba. You married a Roomba. Oh, you brought a- Oh, I got a baby? Is it, is it, did it make a baby? Friend. <laughs> or is he getting cucked right now? Wait, is Lunar Equinox getting cucked right now in his own video by another Roomba? Dirty girl. <laughs> You're kicked out, kid. It's because she's black, isn't it? And <laughs> Ooh. I did not expect that joke. Oh my god. No comments. That that holy shit. <laughs> Flashes of 2010 I saw. <laughs> I saw flashes of 2010 back in COD lobbies. And that's basically the gist of the entire show. But let's yeah. see what the people thought. That's the future for us. Looking how women carry themselves there. Wow, maybe they were right. Women would- I don't think this is too far off in the future though. We'll be having more sex- No, no, straight up. I, I think that like- as soon as AGI or like some sort of like competency in like a partner for like an AI is made, there will be a corporation like Amazon. It's probably going to be Amazon that's going to mass produce these like partner bots, which is basically going to be glorified sex bots and humans will have eternal partners. That's literally the future. Edge runners, not edge runners. Uh, what's it called? There's a show, there's a movie with Ryan Gosling and the whole show is all about like, what was it? You guys know what I'm talking about? Blade Runners. Yeah, that's the one. That's basically the future. Sex with robots than men by 2025. Since robot romance is clearly the peak, what was the worst romance anime of the season? Atari My Dear Moments was more robot romance, but in a subnautica world. Never Makine, seen it. too many losing. Amazing. This is the best rom-com in my opinion. Heroines follows the losers that weren't picked by the main character in a romance anime, which is why they trauma dump on the first person they see. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it can't get the award because that dumping is on a golden toilet of peak. And the award for- Yep, exactly. It truly really is a peak. Worst romance anime of the season. Well, I don't really see any other rom-com shows, right? I, I have no answers for this. Season goes to no longer allowed in another world. Is this a- uh, Thematically, romance-wise, Sensei did get fucked up at the end, so I think it makes sense. There is nothing less romantic than trying to commit double suicide. 
that's also true. They literally started this off with a double suicide. That's very true. If you think about it, he's not wrong. Suicide with your wife, unless you do it like white people. Go on a sailing trip in the ocean. After Sensei attempts okay. Romeo and Julieting, he gets Truck isekai to another world, and his first thought is, wow, a drag- I should probably find my wife so we can kill ourselves again. Yep. It's still a good show, though, in like a 13 Reasons Why type of way. Romance was true- I think that Isekai Shikaku was definitely a good anime, right? It, it, it was- unique sensei is not really a fighter instead he just loves about writing and the whole thing is about him learning about other people's like stories and tragicness and him getting excited off of that and making fun of them and then deporting their asses sometimes but i, I genuinely enjoyed this anime romance was truly in the air this season and in Gigi. some people's homes which is why unfortunately for Nobody. me i have to talk about the theme for the season which was star wars the empire strikes back at 17 minutes and 59 seconds so what was the best is that incest? Best incest anime of the season. Uh, we can't say Oshinoko yet because it has not developed at that point. But it is easily Roshitere. Yeah, incest. It's literally Yo Roshitere, Yuki. Oshinoko season two returned to top the charts again, which is why I didn't watch it. Days with my stepsister is what? like if domestic girlfriend took itself seriously, which is the equivalent of going to a strip club to get a wife when you should go to the electronics store. However, the award. He really likes that Roomba, bro. There's a specific Roomba robot. $275? What the hell? Roombas are that expensive? $275? And this is probably US dollars. What the fuck? However, the award for best incest anime of the season goes Roshitere. to Yuki. Alia sometimes hides her feelings yeah. in Russian. Alia is a girl who I can't understand because I don't speak Russian, which is why Yuki is clearly best girl. Give your little sis a squeeze. This show did the trope the best by not having them fall in love and creating inbred creatures. If I wanted that, I would. Yeah, it was nice how they introduced Yuki in as a potential competition with. Alia with their affection for Masachika, but they immediately kind of prevented that by having Yuki be a sister. But then they just played on the whole incest memes, and now he's not really contesting as a main love route, but at the same time, she's just popping off every other episode through the incest memes. I would go watch the Amish community. I can say that because they can't watch my videos. Since almost all. Wait, 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 what? Having them fall in love and creating inbred creatures. If I wanted that, I would go watch the Amish community. I guess. There's not really new people in those communities, and it just becomes a pool of the same genetics recycled over and over again. I can say that because they can't watch my videos. Okay. Since almost all fantasy anime this season were isekai, it makes it pretty easy to pin down the worst fantasy anime. Tower God. Tower of God. Anime of the season. Probably should be Failure Frame, actually, because that still counts as... What about Nobody Remembers Me? Nobody Remembers Me. Dungeon people follow the behind the scenes of running a dungeon, which is an aspect I don't think anybody has ever cared about. Why does nobody remember me? Nobody remembers this show, bro. Nobody does. I mean, this world is a world whose history has been rewritten, so instead of the five races being defeated, they weren't. Which is probably one of the most cardboard cutout fantasy stories ever. The only reason it's not the worst is because of CGI Humvee. Bye Bye Earth is Alice in Wonderland, but everyone is racist towards her. Take that woman, this is reparation. Oh yeah, this is the one where, like, basically you're the only human in a world of, like, demi-humans. It's basically... Finally, the humans are suffering from what the demi-humans always experience in every other show. It's for furries. However, the award for worst fantasy anime of the season. I feel like Failure Frame should still count as fantasy. It's so bad. Tower of God, again, such a mid-fucking adaptation. But nobody remembers me. I don't know. I, he's had a pattern of behavior where he basically goes into these awards and then he introduces a couple animes and then the winner is none of those animes. So it's not going to be Nobody Remembers Me. I hope he says Tower of God. Season goes to the strongest magician in the Demon Lord's army. Was Never mind. It Was it that bad? I mean, we've only seen two episodes of it, but was it really that bad? It was a human. Ike is trying to keep it a secret that he's human, but he's awful at it, and basically everyone knows. This woman's second words to him were, You're human, aren't you? Aside from that, he's insufferable. He keeps saying, I'm human. I can't kill humans, even though that's what a demon would do. But I can't, because I'm human. Oh yeah? Tell that to the creator of Shmirnoff. Also, this is an isekai. Bet yeah. you didn't see that coming. On the other side of power fantasy anime, what would the oddly wholesome anime of the season? Delico- Hol 
Oh yeah, I don't know about this one, bro. Something about this cover picture makes me uneasy. Rose Nursery follows vampire aristocrats who have to do every parent's worst nightmare. They have to take wow, care of their children, wow. which nobles never do. Don't know what your parents expect. Basically, it's just a bunch of husbandos, right? It's just a bunch of eye candy for girls and, uh, you know, these dudes are just taking care of kids. Excuse was. Aside from being Hotel Transylvania, there's one big twist. Mm. Apparently, Trump is somehow involved. Loving really? the kids is gay. Show Shimon How to Become Ordinary was one of my guilty- Oh, I hear this one was actually like an amazing anime, but I didn't get to check it out because my audience just likes junk food. Pleasures this season. The best way to describe it is imagine sticking three autistic dudes in a room and asking them how someone made hot chocolate by only dirtying a single spoon. Okay, three cups. Wow, one more spoon. than one this time. Then we- One spoon. Uh, I sure hope we don't spend 20 minutes trying to figure this out. However, the award for most oddly wholesome anime of the season goes to a journey through another world raising kids while adventuring after accidentally oh it's the blue kid you know isekai so this did end up pretty good at the end huh and killed by the twink god takumi was reincarnated in front of some twink god yeah usually there's a goddess but in this show it's basically just femboy god some kids who he adopts and takes on dangerous expeditions which is why women typically get custody of children but you know it had some cute moments that yeah, I mean, yeah, immediately- But the kids are so fucking OP, that's the thing, right? You- you might think that it's like we're putting the- There was a lot of jokes made in the couple episodes of reactions that we did for this in this channel where we're like, yep, child labor, put those kids to work, the children yearn for the coal mines, but like, they're really strong, bro! It made me want a couple of little YouTubers running around the house, preferably not anime ones. In anime, it's important to have progressive gags, but which ones kept beating the dead- Oh, uh, sorry, Nokotan, like, I- I- I hate- Hoshtan and the whole straight man gag, it just does not work for me at least. Of course. The magical girl and evil lieutenant is the classic enemies to lovers story. Also, Gizhi Harum, fuck you, I don't care. Storyline, using the gag of trying to hide the relationship, with the only twist being the evil man is just her sugar daddy. Wistoria Wand and Sword uses the gag of a magician who can't use magic, instead using the power of the gym. <laughs> However, the award for the most overused gag anime Oh, I mean, he already showed Nokotan, so Nokotan's not gonna be the most overused gag. I don't know. What, what's it gonna be? My choice was gonna be Nokotan for this. If the season goes Perry, to... Yeah, it could be Perry. It definitely could be Perry, because it's... It could be Giji Harm or Perry, because Perry is just Nor being a fucking stupid idiot the entire time, and Giji Harm is just, you know, it's, it, it's literally the whole format. It's the four coma format. My dear friend Nokotan. Hey. Alright, I guess it's not a rule. I got baited. See, I, I went in thinking that, like, you know, if he talks about an anime first already, then it's, it's not, you know, gonna be mentioned. But did he mention about this? But Hold which up. ones kept beating the dead horse? The magical girl- No, 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 no. He technically did not talk about Nokotan here, right? The first anime that he introduces us with is the magical girl and the evil lieutenant. The Nokotan frame was just something that was just shown as a random fucking image while trying to portray what the category of this is gonna be. Therefore, it still makes sense. The rule still applies. <laughs> This show is the kind that smoothens your brain. The entire anime was the constant gag of deer doing random thing equals mm -hmm. funny. For but that's the thing. Deer doing random thing is funny, but the show strays away from it and just focuses on Koshitan and the introduction of other side characters, and then they try to get back to it. And then Koshitan is just a fucking nuisance. The constant gag of deer doing random thing equals funny. For example, if I'm playing fetch with my dog, you know what I wouldn't expect? A deer to throw it back to me. For more information, look up Nokotan throwing it back. This what? brings us to what was the worst etchy of the season? The I didn't really get to see the etchies because obviously I talked about in the tier list, you know, just wanted to avoid any potential community guideline strikes for pervy shit while the YouTube channel is doing great. So BBWL for 2.5D Arisa? Cafe Terrace and its goddesses got a second season, leaving you pondering why your grandmother didn't leave you a cafe full of women instead of a heavy armoire. Plus sized <laughs> elf is a show that must. Well, then it's not going to win for this category, huh? have been created as a tax write-off. The story follows a massage therapist of all people helping women lose weight. My yep. problem is that their base model changes every frame and their designs felt just as bad as Concord's. <laughs> um, I hear that the anime also, it was a short anime, right? It was not a standard 23 minutes, 40 second episode, rea uh, sorry, episode length. It was mostly like nine minute episodes, right? So I guess, I guess the, the amount of production value that went into it is pretty limited.
No, that's too far, even for you. But the award for worst etchy of the season goes to Is he gonna say 2.5 Diridisa? What is it? Two? 2.5 Dominion? <laughs> really? I thought it was... I, I heard great things about it. It's, is it that bad? National seduction. This was the most depressing thing I've ever watched. The only edging that was going on was me edging the shotgun in my mouth. In game, <laughs> of course. It. Basically, Rintaro is part of the manga club and only loves 2D women. That's right, not even a Roomba is enough to excite him. That's One right, One day, no a Roombas. woman joins the club, cosplaying the person he loves the most, completely oh changing his perception what on the life. Odds? Which is completely false advertising. People are gonna start joining manga clubs expecting Nora Vaughn, but instead they get people like me and Roombas. Well, yes and no. I feel like anime quite often just tells you, like, like the true power fantasy again is rom-com in anime. It's not isekai, it's not battle shonen, it's rom-com where you as the loser beta cuck, loser virgin, you know, it gets all the baddies out of fucking nowhere without doing anything, right? And I don't think people are going to watch 2.5 Your Disa uh, thinking that if they join a club, they're going to get all the bitches. They probably have already tried that in the past throughout many different animes. It's never worked out. Did you know that you can't sustain a hum while holding your nose closed? Go on. Hum. Fake news. Go on, give it a try. You know how stupid you look right now. Fuck you, I did it. No, you look stupid. I did it. Even if you didn't do it. That aside, what anime had the most accurate title? We had Dahlia in Bloom. Failure Frame. Failure Frame had the most accurate title. Or nobody remembers me. Because that is also so funny how literally every time I drop a show, people just... There's at least like five people that's complaining. It's either that or Failure Frame. Crafting a fresh start with magical tools. From this, we can infer that her name is Dahlia. Fresh start means Flower. isekai, and she makes magical tools. But it leaves too much up to question. What are magical tools? Does this job offer health insurance? And why is her father Shao Tucker? The Osan newbie adventurer, trained to death by the most powerful Amazing party, anime. became invincible. Check it Gives out us if you a lot to it. work with. Osan translates to middle age or old man. <laughs> we know he's a new adventurer who is now very strong due to being yeah. trained by strong people. But it's a bit wordy, and in Invincible is kind of misleading. I parry everything too. I mean, that show literally was just, he parries everything, even his own brain cell. So failure frame, I parry everything, nobody remembers me. I could rename it, elderly man becomes a powerful adventurer through abuse. However, the award for most accurate title of the season goes I parry? to, I parry everything. Yeah! It's simple, sweet, and tells you exactly what's gonna happen the entire anime. It's just, again, I, I think that, again, after the I parry dragon, it was amazing. But leading up to that, it was just like, bro, everyone in this show is so fucking insufferable and stupid. But that is the purpose of the show. So it, it, I can't really get mad at that. Monsters parried. Humans parried. Parry parried. Good writing with a solid protagonist. Parried. Parried. Everyone knows the most difficult job in the world is being a YouTuber, so what- Yeah, you guys have no heart, no idea how hard it is to wake up at 3 p.m. after going to bed at like 7 a.m. to watch some fucking YouTube videos and watch anime for a living. Minimum wage workers truly have no clue what kind of suffering I have to go through every day. Who is the best YouTuber anime of the season? Nade Nade Cheer For You has a famous parkour doer? Athlete? I don't <laughs> know. But it sure is funny to watch. Climb okay. up this, fucking parkour. Flip here, parkour. The hell? There was a parkour slice of life anime? Parkour. Do one of these, parkour. Okay. Mayonaka Punch is about a girl who got canceled for punching someone, which beats the alternative, I guess. So she partners up with vampires to make it to a million subscribers, but it oh. can't be the best because a real YouTuber is always two steps ahead. <laughs> I love that shit. I will never get tired of two steps ahead. What, what, what did he say about the ants, bro? Basically, you know how I always say monkeys? He says like something about ant. It's like you're all like ants moving in a way that I'm directing you, right? It's like feed the ants, lead the ants. <laughs> it's like, um, but what is it? Profit of the ants, you are the ant. <laughs> I love that. I fucking love that evil monologue. And the award for best YouTuber anime of the season goes yeah. to... VTuber Legend, how I okay. went viral after forgetting to turn off my stream. This yeah, this anime was trending for a bit in the beginning due to obviously being a VTuber anime and other prominent VTubers taking 
out of content screenshots of a girl saying like, yep, every person should at least rub one off to their favorite Oshi or some shit. I forget the exact context, but there's a lot of like talk about it, but I think it's a bit too niche to appeal to a wider audience. This is the best example of what it's like to be a VTuber. And I should know, I'm part of Hololive after all, see? Hey, really? that's my shoulder. What? Right there. It shows a okay. lot about the behind the scenes, collaborations, content management, and most importantly, drinking to drown out the voices. Still, the most <laughs> accurate good. part is that they made the entire anime into an advertisement. Best girl is something I can easily Ooh. decide on because I like women. Pseudo Harem has Rin, who is an actress that can be anything you want. A Sundere, Kudere, Dondere. I believe the locals call this a catfish or a normal woman. Either way, they're gonna have to fake their <laughs> orgasms. The elusive samurai has some of the most dynamic artwork. Yeah, what very Japan pretty. Which Japan considers best girl, which is... Yeah, there's a... There's, uh... I mean, they weren't as horny for a Lloyd. I, I think there were, but like this kid was even more popular than Lloyd from Seven Shota. Remember? BBL Prince? Reincarnate as the Seventh Prince? That kid was going around too, but like... Uh, this kid, bro, Twitter went... Japanese Twitter went crazy for this kid. You don't want to know what this says if you translate it. Which is weird for two reasons. However, the award for best girl... Best girl of the season of the animes that I've personally... What is it? Komari? Komari? Yuki? Yuki is very fun. Mm. Mm. Rinet? Angie. Mm. How about anyone in Oshinoko? Akane. Kana? Akane Kana? Uh, no, I'm not fucking saying Anna. That blue hair girl demon, bro. Uh, best girl? I don't know. I, I kind of want to just go with Komari because I truly did enjoy Komari's character, right? Not a girl that I'm thirsting over for fan service, but just like a great character overall in that anime. Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 oh. sorry. What the hell is happening here? Technical difficulties, technical difficulties, and we're back. And we're back. Is this not the epitome? Girl? Best girl of the season goes to yeah. Makoto from Senpai is an Otokonoko. Is this not the epitome of? I forgot about this. <laughs> It's just a mean fucking answer, bro. It's just a mean fucking answer. Beauty and grace. Kind of weird they gave her both a female and male love interest. Yeah. And I still love don't know triangle. what Otokonoko is, but it probably doesn't matter. Now it's time to figure out what was the best trash anime of the season. Best trashy anime. Well, if all are, are all of these considered trash anime? Because I don't think Roche today is trash anime. But... This is basically my tier list, right? Like, I think that Oshinoko, Makane, and with Story truly were leagues ahead. And there were some of these animes. I think that Tensor obviously is getting placed with more criticism here simply because I love the show so much, but the studio did it dirty to what I think should be better, right? I, I, but, um, I, I don't know. Power of God, again, it's just a more biased take from me where I, I love this show so much, but I hate what the studio did to it. Like, it should be probably higher than these two, but I just placed it so low. But what is the best trashy anime of the season? Season. Ramen Akaneko was about a cat ramen shop. Don't let the immigrants They're find out about this one. Sakuna of Rice and Ruin was a video game adaptation I never expected to see. Stardew Valley on top though. Tasuketsu, Fate of the Majority, was- I hear this is so fucking trash. Like, I think this is one of the first animes I was gonna air in summer 2024 and I was gonna check it out and everyone was like, bro, this is actually doo doo water. Probably the worst thing I watched this season and I watched a man try to introduce a Roomba to his parents. However, the award for the best trash anime of the season goes, goes to... to Love is Indivisible by Twins. Siblings what? fight over things all the time. I use Love is Indivisible by Twins. What is this? He also he almost started playing domestic Kanazio, right? I I used to fight with my brother over who got to use the good controller for the Xbox. I, I never won, of course, because I was the younger brother. Wah, wah. <laughs> siblings. Anyways, these siblings are fighting over a different type of joystick. Here's the twist: eh? they both don't fight and willingly give him up to the other sister. Poor June gets. G both are just cucking themselves and trying to push the guy towards the other sister. Gaslit into dating one of them just to be sent to the other sister. But the funniest part is, he's like, You're breaking up with me? Yeah, 
sure, I'll go on a date with your sister tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the... <laughs> Yeah, I think I would hate this fucking anime if this is basically a main character that's feeling bad for himself as is like, oh no, you rejected me. I gotta go with your sister now. For tomorrow. Thank you for coming to the fourth annual Trash Anime Awards show. Now me and my wife gotta get out of here. Amazing. Yo, domain expansion. Hello, purple. Yokuzo, watashi wa no soul society. Oh, wait. What the fuck was that in <laughs> he went from a do domain expansion into a fucking a bankai from no, 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 fucking Aizen. You know, why mo domain expansion? Ooh. Hollow purple. Oh shit! Yokuzo, what does she want no? Yokuzo, what does she want no? Soul society. Amazing video by Lunar Equinox. Please go give him a like and check out his channel if you have not. He makes some great content. And this is definitely a concept of video that I'm not going to say that I thought of. I, I know that these are definitely things that other people have been doing. But basically, like Summer 2024, 2024 Trash Anime Awards show, I thought about doing something similar. But rather than it's just me making the content, it would be like my viewers voting for it, right? We would create our own stupid meme categories and then you guys would vote and I would just simply just look at the polls. But this is more of a, a clever way to do a summary of summer 2024 anime and then give, you know, their personal pixel. Fantastic video concept. And I will see you next time.